Tonight we're going to do two things, but the major thing is going to be on antenna analyzers. And Jeff is going to, uh, to do that for us. And, you know, it's a piece of gear that we all have or hopefully have or use, but it's really fun to look at the different comparison. He's going to compare several. Sometime in the future, we have several people in the club who have a Comet. I'll let them do a review on the Comet and how it compares. But um, uh, I really appreciate uh, Jeff uh, doing it. By the way, we want to congratulate Jeff. He's the new, I think it is, vice president of the uh, VHS club, um, the Inland uh, VHF club. So we congratulate uh, Jeff. Where? What's that? I, I'm sorry, I missed uh, whatever. The VHF club in, up there, Spokane? Yeah, in Spokane, yes. And um, so um, we're going to let him take it. And uh, at this point, Jeff, if you want to do a screen share, you can do it. And um, we'll let you take off. Unmute. There we go. Now there you go. Hear me. <laughs> um, share that screen. Uh, are you guys seeing? Uh, oh, Peter Stewart just joined as well. Mel, might want to let him in. I did. You guys see the person? Yes. Are you seeing? Okay. Yeah, Mel, are you guys seeing the screen now with uh, the antenna analyzer stuff? Right. Hey, Jeff, yep. Yes. If We're seeing it. Good. If you can go full screen, it would look better. Yes, um, I can do that. There you go. Uh, now you'll be able to keep track of <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> anyway, um, basically, uh, I had an MSJ 269, like many other people, um, you know, and used it for a couple of years and found that it was uh, you know, a useful tool, but then um, it broke. <laughs> I, um, I used a cable, it has an end connector, and I used a, a cable that um, had a, a male pin on an end connector that uh, protruded just a little too far, and with uh, continual you know, connecting, disconnecting, eventually the female part of the um, and connector, the pins inside broke off. So I had to send it away and feeling naked and lost without an analyzer, uh, I um, decided to buy another one and did some research and I thought the Rig Expert 600 uh, fit the bill um, simply because you know, I do a lot of VHF stuff as well. And it goes from DC, well, almost DC to uh, 600 megahertz and um, it uh, I'll be talking about that one um, then I uh, had the opportunity to play with an A50 AA54 which uh, obviously only does HF because it goes 54 megahertz and I thought that was pretty cool but the 55 um, was the newer one and got my hands on one of those and realized that it has what I consider to be newer software than the 600, and I'll show you why later on. Um, both of them um, can operate plugged as a standalone unit and also plugged into a computer. And they have some software called AntScope 2, uh, which again, I'll show you what that is, but um, for those of us that need bigger screens to look at, um, this is the solution. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, along came the Nano VNAs, and uh, for forty dollars, I had to have one of those uh, and tried it out. And obviously, the Rig Experts, um, I was just totally amazed how much easier they were to use than uh, the the MFJs. But then. I looked at this Nano VNA and this $40 thing did um, almost the same stuff the other ones did. 
and then they came out with the Nano VNA-H, which is basically the same thing, but in a metal can, and then the Nano VNA-F, which is a um, hundred dollar one and a big with the biggest screen in a middle can as well and they too have software called nano vna saver software so um, i'll be showing you some of that as well and of course i'll show you the um, 269 so <clears throat> this is uh, the rig expert aa 600 it's uh, around about $484 plus tax. So, you know, you're just around 500 ish. Um, and as I said, it goes 600 megahertz. It's got a color screen. It uses three AA batteries and they can be in any variety. It has an end connector. Um, and when they're plugged into a uh, computer, it uses a standard USB to printer type cable. Um, and uh, it, obviously at that point it's using the USB power. So it saves you a little bit of um, battery time. And <clears throat> this is, uh, this is what it does. It's uh, you can do your SWR return loss phase, Smith chart and a whole bunch more stuff, which we'll get into. Um, it's lightweight, it's comfortable, it's got a rubber body, and the manual, uh, unlike many Chinese manuals, and in fact, the non-existent Nano VNA manual, um, there, although there are some now online, people who've done other manuals, but the manufacturer's uh, manuals for the VNAs are, you know, typical Chinese stuff. Um, but this, these are made in um, Croatia, and obviously they employed somebody from England because it's English English, not American English, that they they used. Um, but um, it's pretty a pretty good manual, and <clears throat> this is um, one of the screens you can do a SWR measurement and get something that looks like this tells you you know if you're doing a single frequency um, i'll get into the multi-frequency mode a little bit later on or you can do the sweep and have something that looks like this which is basically uh, the same thing same thing just showing you um, over the uh, 18 kilohertz plus or minus 18 kilohertz so this is you know throughout the um, uh, two meter band, it's well below 1.5 SWR, or whatever antenna this was that I swept, I forget. Um, this, this is the Smith chart, what it looks like, and uh, same antenna, but with um, uh, 9.375 kilohertz, uh, plus or minus. So you can see that antenna is pretty good. You can also uh, get a, um, a phase chart and where the green lines crossing the red line is um, basically, you know, quarter wave or half wave for the, for the next one. So you need to be able to measure that particular point um, as you'll see in a minute because they are relatively expensive. These are the, negatives of this device. They're relatively expensive and you have to do some math um, if you want to uh, find a coax length so um, or for a velocity factor. Um, and you can do it and there's the math. You know, if your velocity factor is known, you can use this math and um, end up with the length, which in this case happened to be uh, 0.412 meters. And conversely, you can work out the uh, velocity factor if you know the length. Um, the reason I'm mentioning that is because this next baby, this one, the 55, actually will do that math for you and you don't have to have a calculator handy as well. Um, but as you can see, it only goes to 55 megahertz. Uh, it only uses two batteries and is similar to the uh, 600 in that it uses the um, USB to um, 
printer type cable to talk to the um, computer and obviously uses the power from the computer as well. Does all the same stuff, um, you know, and the manual on this one is even better than the manual on the 600. Um, it's um, as, as good a manual as you would find on any uh, American piece of equipment. And um, this is, the screen's a little different, of course. This is that same thing doing an SWR. You get a, a screen that looks like that. Um, you, both of them will do this feature, which is the multi SWR. So you can plug in, you know, five different frequencies and see what the uh, SWR is going to be at each of those frequencies. So uh, whatever I was doing here uh, was obviously good at 2494 <laughs> and not very good elsewhere. Um, one of the other things is um, this is what the sweep looks like. They actually on the display have uh, the blue bands are all of the amateur bands for the US. Um, so you can do a sweep. This happened to be uh, the sweep of a wire antenna I have up, which is not particularly great. Um, it's um, just slightly above the um, uh, seven um, megahertz and you can see slightly below the, um, uh, what would the that would be uh, 17 megahertz, 18 megahertz. You can see the minimum there was 17.7. Uh, is 1.38. So you get a sweep that looks like that. I'm going to actually uh, later on show you a sweep. Um, our good friend, I, I believe that uh, the antenna that I have on my roof uh, once belonged to Mr. Avery. So um, the, the hex beam, I'll show you what the hex beam looks like uh, later on. Um, that's the SWR. And of course, the, the return loss, you can uh, look at that. This is also something that you, with the AA600, you have to be plugged into the laptop to see it. And that's why I think this software is, is newer. And the reason why I wanted to show everybody both of them, because they are significantly different. Um, then moving on, there is uh, on the menu structure, which I'll show you a little bit later on. Um, the Rig Expert 55 has one called Tools, where you can um, you can work out cable loss, cable impedance, um, the work out the length for a stub tuner, or for example, the length uh, and velocity factor of a piece of coax, which again I'm going to actually demonstrate for you, and that's what the screen looks like um, when you're in that uh, mode. Um, let's move on to the Antscope 2 uh, software interface is USB interface, so it's pretty standard. Um, the software actually controls the analyzer functions, um, so you can plug stuff in on the, uh, the uh, Antscope screen and it will change whatever is happening on the analyzer. So it, uh, they do talk back and forth to each other, which is really good. Um, and you can save and print in very uh, a number of different uh, formats, um, which again I can I'll show you a bit more. And you can switch between all of the screens. This, for example, is what um, the analyzer screen looks like. The Antscope uh, screen looks like. Um, and this was one that I got off of their website. So it's actually from an AA230 uh, zoom, which you can see up in the top left corner. You see the SWR phase um, return loss um, and uh, time domain Smith, all of the others phase, everything is up there. You can put markers. Uh, that's what the little triangles are, number them. And wherever the crosshairs are, um, that uh, gives you a, a reference there as well. You can see the 154, 133, 
at 3.52, so that's the frequency NSWR, which is also in the little box in the bottom left-hand corner as well. So it gives you everything you need to know, return loss, impedance, um, about that particular point where the crosshairs are. <coughs> Excuse me. Up uh, in the other little box up there where it says one, two, three, four, five, the black box, um, that's the uh, one, two, three, four, five markers. And um, it gives you SWR, return loss, impedance, phase, all of the information you need to know about um, that, uh, those points. The, um, this, by the way, is the sweep of, of uh, it's a return loss graph of the hex beam that I have on my roof at the moment on the tower. So you can see um, anything over about um, you know 12, 14 is uh, you're getting into um, very good uh, return loss for antennas. So you can see that that hex beam is really good on everything except the uh, 12 meter band where it's just re peaking at uh, about 12 and you see on the six meter band on the far right there um, the lower end of the six meter band it's really good and then it takes a a dive and so that hex beam is not particularly good on six meters um, and then this is the swr graph um, of the same antenna. So those of you used to looking at SWR, you can again see the SWR is, um, tells you much the same information. The antenna is good on um, all of the bands. The 12, it's not quite as good, and the six is not very good at the uh, higher end. So they both tell you the same thing. This is what uh, an SWR looked like of a 400, uh, you know, UHF antenna that I uh, have that I put together. Um, and you'll see there's two sweeps there. Um, one of the things, because I'm, um, Mel's been to my house, so he knows, the, but the rest of you don't, that um, from the front of the house, it uh, looks like a single story, but it's a, actually a two story and a walkout at the back. So the room I'm in right now is subterranean to the north of me, um, but it's walkout behind me. Um, so one of the things I do when I'm making an antenna um, or tuning antenna is in, in here, I will point it in several directions and make multiple sweeps like this one I did of a two meter antenna um, and basically pointing it northeast southwest because I have a lot of electronic equipment on the north side uh, which is subterranean not so much on the south side and the, the point is that you should expect to see minor differences like that but nothing major and um, what it's going to tell me is that I'm, I should be able to take this antenna out since the um, uh, differences are minor. I should be able to take this antenna outside and put it somewhere and expect to see a very similar result. So uh, that's, that's why I uh, use multiple sweeps. Um, and then this was a, um, uh, this was a Diamond BC-103 antenna. Um, and you can see on the Smith chart that uh, it starts out um, just a little bit on the um, inductive side and then goes through, you know, a perfect uh, 50 ohm point and then goes somewhat capacitive. So, uh, you know, again, it's telling you um, everything you need to know about it. What I didn't mention earlier on, I will now, is um, you can see the settings here. This is where you, uh, are you guys seeing my pointer, by the way? Yes, we are. 
Okay, good. So you can click export and export this and it will go to your computer um, and you can save it as a CSV or their own particular brand of file um, or a couple of other formats. You can import one from your computer. So the advantage here is that you can do a sweep export it to your computer and then a year later come back do another sweep and compare the two because you can import it and then do a sweep over the top of it and see uh, whether or not your antenna has you know something's changed on it likewise you can print it um, as a pdf as a jpeg as a ping um, that kind of thing you can do a screenshot of this um, you can have many of them over here uh, save them, open them, that kind of thing. Here you can change the number of points um, from 100 to 10,000 <laughs> or something, some ridiculous number like that. Um, the only difference is that obviously it's going to take much longer to do the sweep, and, but it will be an even more accurate sweep. Um, and here's where you put your start and stop frequencies up here. Um, well, so that's, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't catch that. Yeah, I didn't catch it either. I'm sorry. Whoever asked the question, go ahead and ask it again. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, I have the question on, on the, uh, the graphs a couple of, this is Janet, uh, WX7P, um, on when you were doing the hex beam. And my question is, can you expand that graph to make it bigger so you can see exactly where, you know, uh, get it down closer in terms of what, where you're resonant? Can, is that something you can do? Uh, yes, Thank Johnny. You can, you can um, the way that you would do that is uh, basically, um, let me see if I can step backwards here. Yeah, let's step backwards. Okay, so there's the uh, SWR graph. So what you can do is just, in, I did a sweep of the entire thing um, because I wanted to see all six bands. So the way to do what you want to do, you would go into the 20 meter band uh, and just do a sweep, you know, just a little bit either side of the 20 meter band and then go to the 17 and the 15 and the 12 and, and do individual sweeps for each band and then they would look something like that. Okay, so that answer your question, Janet? You're muted still. Yes, you didn't answer okay. the question. Okay, good, thanks. All right. Um, where do we get? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, here's a. This was a a, a slot cube antenna. Um, I don't know you may remember John Portoon uh, had it in the um, uh, QSC magazine um, a couple of years ago, and I built several of them, gave them to friends who didn't have uh, a two meter decent two meter antenna, and as you can see, it's a fairly decent antenna. Um, it's, uh, that was the, um, Smith chart for it. And, um, this again was a, uh, the, a, the diamond BC, uh, 103. And this is the return loss for that same antenna. And now we're going to move on to the nano VNAs. The, like I said, the, um, the basic one is sort of skeleton. It's not in a box. It, it's a sandwich of three PCBs with a battery in between the lower two and the, some other electronics between the screen and the center one. Um, you can see that uh, looking at the white one, there's a knob uh, or a switch or whatever you want to call it um, that sticks out fairly far um, on the right hand top right hand edge of it it is very um, um, 
I'm trying to think of, let's put it this way, it, one could easily break it off, you know, so it's very fragile, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> um, and uh, so you have to be careful with it, but you know, for $40, um, I was in awe <laughs> when I when I first got it. Um, they, like I said, they run for 40, 50 in the skeletal version, 75 in a little metal case, and around 100 to 139 for the F version, which um, I have both of them, so I'm gonna show you, you'll see the difference in the screen. Obviously, the F one I bought um, later, and it has even better, newer software in it as well. Um, and it uses SMA connectors, as you can see. <clears throat> and it does, um, let's move on to the next one. It does everything that the other guys do, and a little more. Because it does um, S21 measurements as well. I'm not going to get into uh, into those, but um, it's just something that the others don't do. Um, even the $500 one. Um, an expensive small. It's a touch screen, so you know obviously there will be some uh, wear there over time. Um, and as I explained, the cases are the difference. The, the um, small one, the problem with it is, it, as you will see shortly, uh, it is small, it's hard to read. The switch, as I said, is delicate. SMAs are delicate. In fact, they tell you, they give you a uh, pair of SMA to SMA cables, and they tell you do not put an adapter onto the SMA uh, you know, an adapter to an SO239 um, on the actual SMA that's on the the edge of the device because it's fragile and you'll break it off. So they give you, um, they're six or eight inches, yeah, about eight inch long um, cables that um, go SMA to SMA and then you can put your adapter on that end and that takes a strain off of the one that's on the edge of the, the board. Um, that's what they look like. This is basically what the screen tells you. Um, you have your start stop frequencies at the bottom there. You've got markers, the same as um, the expensive ones. Um, you've got a, there's a calibration status there, reference position. Markers up at the top uh, tells you um, the uh, as you can have a Smith chart, this is their picture and they had everything going all at the same time. So it's a bit messy. You could turn off the traces. There are four traces and you can turn them on and off, um, which I'll show you. Um, when you do, um, want to change the frequency, you hit stimulus. And when you hit stimulus, you get, um, another screen that says start stop and then you get this one here and there's the start stop so you would and if you wanted to check um, you know uh, six meter antenna or something you could punch in 50 m uh, for your start and 54 m for your stop frequency that kind of thing or you know whatever band you want to watch, look at um, you just punch the, that in um, and then of course it will do the sweep. One of the cool things you can get, this, the, this is uh, actually an extra and um, they're, I think they're running about 27 bucks um, for people who are not used to looking at Smith charts and stuff. Um, I don't, you might not be able to see it, but there are little connectors on here and this is a PCB that's $27 and you get the cables that plug into it so it's a, a micro SMA type connector, as you can see on the uh, ends of those two cables. But this way um, you can have a look and it shows you what a capacitor and a, you know, a, a low pass filter, high pass filter, attenuation, perfect load, open, short. It shows you what they would look like, you know. So it, uh, it's a good learning tool for somebody that's not used to looking at uh, 
uh, Smith charts. And this is the software that's on the computer. And um, you can, uh, they, they don't have it, um, SWR here, but you would go down here and hit display setup and change one of these to show SWR instead of phase if, that, if that's what you would like. Um, these three, they're blue, red, green. You can just see them. There's the red, there's the blue, and the green's over there. Um, those are markers, just the, the same as um, you had on the screen that's on the device. Um, here's where you put your start and stop frequency. So it's, it's similar to the um, Rig Expert and Scope software in that respect. And you would tell it to do a sweep here, and my internet connection says it's unstable. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's done that a couple of times. Um, where where these markers are, it then tells you the frequency, the impedance, um, what the impedance is uh, made out of, um, and uh, you know, in terms of adductors capacitance, it gives you the return loss, the SWR and that for each of those three markers. So, you know, pretty much everything you might want to know about um, the, your antenna. Um, so that's that software. And now we get to the 269 Pro. And mine was around uh, to 450 bucks. Um, and it does, you know, like I said, 1.8 to uh, 170 megahertz. And um, then it does 415 to 520. So it covers the VHF and UHF bands. However, um, the UHF um, is not, it does not give you the impedance. It only gives you the SWR. Mm -hmm. Has an end connector, it uses 10 batteries. Um, double A batteries is rechargeable. It does have a um, 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 up at the top here. This is the uh, external power supply plug into the socket there, so you can have a, a 12 volt supply um, feeding it. So you can use external power, um, but of course that ties it down to your desk for sure. Um, but you can do, you know, all of the same stuff. Everything you can do with the other ones is just that you have the, you have to um, use these buttons here. So I'll show you right now. Um, it's very power hungry with the the batteries. They don't last any longer. The ten batteries don't last any longer than the three batteries in the six hundred or the two batteries in the fifty five. Um, it's very heavily menu driven. Everything appears up here, but you have to push this button, that button, sometimes both buttons, sometimes both buttons, and then one of the other buttons. So you're, you know, if you don't use it a lot, you end up having to have the manual there, where both of the um, rig expert ones are pretty much self-explanatory. You know, I mean, it's not not uh, anywhere near as menu driven as this thing is. Um, it is in a sturdy metal case, but um, I've managed to bend these wings a little bit on my, <laughs> a, a, a drop does that. Um, it's, and it's pretty heavy, of course, with 10 batteries compared to the other ones and certainly less convenient for power use. Um, one of the other things you can do, of course, is you can use the same math that we used on the 600 with the nano VNAs um, to, you know, find a resonant frequency, that kind of thing. Um, or you can with you find a capacitor or inductor measurement. So with that, let's see them in use. Now, what I've got to do is. Um, stop sharing this screen for a minute and this is this would be a good time for everybody to take a potty break if they want <laughs> <laughs> by the way I, I would say one of the things that i really like about the rig experts uh is that you can take a picture 
uh, of any screen you want. And then, like I know when I was working on my stepper, I took all my screenshots and sent them to Adam, and he was able to analyze all of them from the west side while, he, while I was over here. And it was really quite convenient. Uh, they were very clear and crisp and um, gave a lot of detail. So I did, I did like that about the rig expert. You know, one, one comment that I have on the 600, I, I got one. Um, <clears throat> it, it's maybe a little bit hidden on the menu, but there is a way to plug in the velocity factor and, and get a reading in length. Uh, on, I've done it many times. Um, yes. it, it's buried in the menus. It's it's not as convenient as uh, 54 or 55, but it's, it's there. If, if you dig for it, you can find it. Yeah, I've got it. Um, uh, that is, that yeah, is true. It, more, it just it just takes a lot more work than the fifty five does. Yeah, the fifty five's really got nice software from the looks of it. Oh man! Okay, uh, can, can you all see the hardware now? No, it's not up yet. Oh yes, of course not. Um, I have to hit the button called share. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> now, can you see it? Yeah, we see it now. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I'm going to move over um, and move the microphone. So, the first thing I'll show you is the difference in the size of the um, Nano VNA versus the uh, VNA F, which is this one. And you can see that's a skeletal one. This one's in a nice metal box. So that thing right there at the bottom is the battery. But there's the switch, the connector, um, the USB right there, the on off switch, and the one that I was telling you about that is fragile because this goes left, right, and in as well to, to make selections. So you can actually operate it using that button, that switch, but um, it's much easier to use the touch screen. But let's take, first of all, um, We'll take them in the same order that we uh, had them in the presentation. So here's the rig 600. Let me move the others out of the way a second. So on, I want to do a, uh, they, they both have this function switch here. And if you push function seven, it gets you to the multi. Um, otherwise you're doing SWR. Um, or you can do a uh, function Smith chart would, would be five. So look at the menu. We want to do a uh, scan the SWR. So just, uh, just so you understand what I'm scanning right now. Um, I have a um, two meter antenna behind me mounted on top of my component rack. Um, so we'll just do a sweep of that, press the four button. You can see I've got the frequency set for 151 plus or minus 9.375. They, I don't know why they picked these um, odd numbers, uh, but the way you change that is there's the range change. So you go it's up and down by these strange numbers plus or minus four, plus or minus nine, et cetera, plus or minus 18. Well, this antenna that I've got behind me um, is a wide band two meter antenna uh, because um, we're putting up a, a repeater system for uh, the scope. That's, uh, those of you who don't know, that's the Spokane County Sheriff's Community Oriented Policing Effort of which 
both Peter and I uh, are involved with. Um, and um, this repeater system is we're trying to put up um, is going to transmit at 153 and receive at 159. So our vehicles need to transmit at 159. But we also, because many of us, uh, there's quite a few of us that are amateurs, um, radio operators, we wanted also to be able to have the radios in the cars be able to go down to the handband so we could um, talk to each other on those frequencies as well, which is why we needed an antenna that had a, about a 20 megahertz uh, bandwidth. And when, as soon as you press OK, this is what you see. And that's how long it takes to do a sweep. So you can see that um, from 100, uh, you know, 142 to 159, um, it's below 1.5. So pretty good antenna. So that's uh, all you have to do there. If you wanted to do the multi thing, um, then you can go in and you can put in your different frequencies there. Um, I won't bother um, doing that, but I just wanted to show you the, the one thing with this one, because everything is, they're all very similar, so no point boring you with watching all of them. This uh, is, oh, by the way, the 55 has a uh, SO239, so um, this is, Going to, I'm going to do a sweep on the. Um, there we go. Just don't plug your SO39 into an end connector. <laughs> what? <laughs> Been there and done that. It's not good. <laughs> yes. I've, I've used end connectors uh, all the way up to my antenna. <laughs> so uh, just to reduce. Uh, well, because they're a better connector. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's a, a PL259 to uh, N. <laughs> anyway. He's wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, this is uh, where it comes up and it says, uh, you know, we wanted, let me, there we go. So want to do the same thing with this one, do a sweep of, um, of that. And we'll just hit um, OK because it's already on there. And we've got, I, I have it set for um, 33 megahertz plus or minus uh, 25. And that's what it looks like on this device. It's showing me, uh, you remember the sweep you saw earlier on? The 12 meter wasn't so good. The six meter wasn't so good. And so it's, it's telling us that that antenna hasn't changed, you know, since I uh, last did the sweep on it. So now we can take this and we can, um, you know, put it on uh, the computer if we want to. But I wanted to show you one more get thing with this one because um, Mel actually asked me about this a while back. Um, I happen to have right here the uh, end of a piece of coax. Um, and if you don't know how long the coax is, but you do know the velocity factor, then we go to function tools. And let's go down uh, there, go down to the length and velocity factor, hit OK. The default comes up with a velocity factor of 66. So let's just go with that and see, you know. And it says it's 51 feet, 0.68. Well, as it happens, I know this is only 50 feet long. So we will uh, do the reverse. So 
come down here and um, we'll find out what the true velocity factor is. And there you go. So that is um, something that the 600 doesn't do, the nanos won't do that easily. You can, you know, with a calculator and a lot of workarounds, you can do the same thing. But um, this thing is just, well, in my opinion, awesome. <laughs> because <laughs> it saves a lot of headaches and work. Okay, so that was all I really wanted to show you with that one. And now we'll show you the nano VNA. So this is the baby v nano VNA. Um, maybe I can bring the camera. No, can't get it. I hope, hope that didn't make you too sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so touch screen. Uh, like I said, you're gonna. It's gonna be hard for you to see, but um, I'm gonna go stimulus, start frequency, and then go. Um, oh, by the way, what I've got right here, this thing, is a um, a two meter antenna mounted to the desk here at the moment. It, I didn't know um, uh, this antenna uh, coil didn't have, when I got it, didn't have um, a stainless steel rod. So I put some welding rod in there and I was playing around trying to find out what, where it would be resonant. So I'm gonna put in 140 megahertz but, uh, yeah, all right, that'll do. Um, and then stop frequency will put in uh, 150 megahertz again, and there it does the sweep. And what you can see, uh, just about anyway, is this is the Smith chart one, the purple one, which is harder to see. I don't know if I can bring it up closer, closer to the camera. Yeah, there you go. So the, the purple one is the SWR. It's changing because my hand is getting close to the antenna. I moved it away there. And the yellow one is um, the return loss. So you can see up at the top, it tells you there the return loss. Below it, it tells you the SWR. Um, so that's, that's what that baby looks like. Um, and this is not a cable that uh, comes with it. You have to buy this extra cable. So let's turn that off and show you what this guy looks like. Because the switch is on the end here. Um, so we'll turn that guy on and already you can see that it's much brighter, bigger, and it has a scale down on the side here that the other one didn't have. So you actually had to, with the other one, you had to go in and set the scale, which you can adjust it, you know, for, um, half, you know, like a SWR of 0.5 you know, for each division. Uh, this comes up with um, a scale on the side or, already. So we can go in and we'll turn off, uh, we can turn um, some of the traces off so it's not quite so busy. Um, we'll turn that one off there as well. And <clears throat> stimulus start. 144. And there I've got um, just the Smith chart and the um, uh, return loss on there. And the return loss is minus 11. Um, and we can go in and um, change any of 
any one of these to show us SWR if we want. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, let's, it's um, and the other thing is we can put in these markers. Um, we can drag, take a marker down, move it around, find our uh, sweet spot, adjust it. This is changing because this antenna is right in my way here. So um, anyway, um, that, uh, that gives you an idea of how much bigger this guy is and how much easier it is to uh, see everything. As you can see, I have a cable here, uh, and that's uh, with this one um, what you would use to display this onto the computer. So um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, anybody, if anybody has any questions about any of these. Uh, Okay, uh, if you've got questions, make sure you unmute your mic. Hey, uh, this is Peter. I have that Nano F, and uh, this is all fairly new to me, but it's so simple to use. I just looked at a couple charts and was able to uh, get up and really do a quick scan. I've got a new uh, Wolf River coil system that I'm really looking forward to doing. And, and for a hundred bucks, you can't beat it. Uh, so I, I really highly recommend it. It's very simple to use and it's big enough that I don't really need to, to hook it up to the computer. I mean, I could just sit there in my, at my desk and it's very clear. So. Yeah. I, try it. As you can see up here, you can probably just see that says log mag right there. I mean, it's, it is so much more readable than um, uh, the small one, but the small one fits in your shirt pocket. You know, this one's a little bulky for your shirt pocket, but you know, if you're going to climb a tower, you can take this up with you. You can do a sweep, save it on these devices and then come down and then put it, plug it into your computer and do a, a print. Yeah, so, Jeff, that lets you save, uh, Five reference points, doesn't it? Um, yes, yeah, it is. Um, actually, uh, I forget now. Um, I think it's five. Five, yeah. Yeah, yeah, five points, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and then it would just kind of record over itself, you know, after that. Yeah. Okay, well... Uh, Jeff, thank you. And if you have questions, you know how to get him. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, it was, I think it was nice to be able to see the difference between them. And um, I think it's good for us to kind of get an idea on different ones.